the votes are in and you all want to see a temporary ban and a temporary mute command. So that's exactly what I'll we'll be showing you how to do in this video. Be sure to subscribe so you can see more tutorials like this one. For this video, you will need the guild's intent, the guild underscore messages intent, and the guild underscore members intent. Within your ready events, you're going to connect to your MongoDB server, and you have to include an exclamation point here if you're using TypeScript. You don't have to do this if you're using JavaScript. And also, if you're using the Warnoff Keys commands package, then you don't have to manually connect like this. Instead, we can initialize Warnoff Keys commands and pass in our Mongo information so it will connect for us. Now, if you're not using Warnoff Keys commands, you can skip to the next section on the YouTube player. So the first steps for initializing this is to specify our commands and our features directory. So make sure you create a commands and features directory within your own workspace. You can change the name of these, but be sure that you specify the name of them within these strings right here. Next, you want to create your own test servers string array. This will be the guild ID for your test server. That way we don't create a global slash command because that might take up to an hour to register. And we just want to test things immediately. So we'll create guild based slash commands. And here we can pass in our own Mongo URI. And this is why we did not have to manually connect earlier. And finally, if you're using TypeScript and TS node, you should specify TypeScript as true. If you're using JavaScript, or if you're compiling your TypeScript into JavaScript, then do not include this line. So in addition to your commands and your features folders, make a models folder and create a new file in there called punishment-schema.ts or .js if you're using JavaScript. This is the file that will define our MongoDB schema, basically the blueprint for the data we want to store to our database. So within here, you first need to import mongoose and the schema property, which you can do so like this. Afterwards, we're going to need to create something called a required string. This is a simple object that just represents the type of string and required as true. That's because we'll have to specify this highlighted object right here four times in a few minutes. And so instead of typing it out each individual time, we can just pass in the required string object. Next, we're going to create our actual schema here, passing in two objects into the constructor. The first object is going to be the actual information for our collection. And the second object will be different options. In this case, we're passing in timestamps as true. This will automatically add a created at and updated at timestamp to each document that's created. Next, we're going to specify four required strings. And this is why I created a single object here. So I don't have to specify this highlighted code four different times. Instead, I can just pass in required string four different times. But here we have the user ID and the guild ID, the staff ID and the reason. We also want expires as a date. And then we have a required string here called type. But this string can only be ban or mute as specified with this enum right here. So this collection will have every temporary ban and temporary mute. And then every so often, we'll reach into this collection to see if any have expired. And if so, we will then unban or unmute those users. Next, we're going to specify the name for our collection. In this case, I'll call it punishments, but you can call it whatever you want. And then finally, we're going to export our schema as a model. And we're going to do two different things here. First, we're going to see if the schema has already been created as a model within the models array. This is something that's done automatically by Mongoose whenever we call the model function. So essentially, we're saying return anything that is already existing for this name. But if nothing actually exists yet, then we're going to create it. This is most useful if you're going to be importing this in two different places. You won't create multiple models for the same schema, but instead you will reuse the same model. So let's now focus on our two commands. Here we see ban.ts and mute.ts. I was just creating both of these files. And of course, use the .js extension if you're using JavaScript instead. Now, both of these are going to be very similar. So we're going to start with the mute command and then copy and paste into the ban command and then modify some things to make that work as well. Within the mute command, we first need to import our schema. So within JavaScript, you'd import it using the standard require syntax here. And within TypeScript, it will be the standard import syntax here. And also within TypeScript, you're wanting to import the user and I command from Discord.js and Word of Keys commands respectively. These two will be types that we'll specify here in a moment. So most command handlers, including one of keys commands, export an object, which we're going to do that right here. And if you're using TypeScript with one of keys commands, you can specify your object as an I command, which will give us additional autocomplete when working with our project. So now every property inside of this object is going to specify some information about our command. For example, we can have a category and a description. We can specify what permissions you need to have in order to run this command. This way, the mute command isn't available to everyone and only administrators. However, you might want to have server owners specify which roles can use it in case there are staff roles that don't have the administrator permission. Within one of keys commands, we can specify require roles is true. This will make it so no one can use this command until server owners who use your bot specify which roles are allowed to use it. Typically, you only need one of these. You don't need both. 
but as an example, I will include both here. Next, we want to specify our argument information. In this case, we're gonna have a minimum of three arguments, and we can also name those arguments, for example, user, duration, and reason. Now, user and duration are one single word, so they will go first, but reason can have multiple words, which in our command handler's eyes would look like multiple arguments, so that needs to go last. That way, we exactly know where our user and our duration are compared to our reason. Now, within one of these commands, you can specify what type of variables these are going to be within your slash commands. By default, everything is a string, so I created this extra array here to specify that this is a user for the first argument. That way, when using a slash command, I can actually tag someone. I then have slash as both to create both a legacy command and a slash command, and test only as true is important. This will make it so our slash command is only registered to the guilds that we specified in our test servers array. If you exclude test only as true, then this will create a global slash command, which might take up to an hour to register in all servers using your bot. And then finally, we have an asynchronous callback function, and this function is invoked every single time someone actually runs this command. Now we're past a lot of information within this object as a parameter, and some of the pieces of information we want will be the arguments, which is a string array of each individual argument, such as user, duration, and reason. We also have the member which ran the command, which we're going to rename to staff. We then have the guild where it was ran, your client object for the bot, and then a message or an interaction, depending on if this is going to be a legacy command or a slash command. So the first thing we want to do is make sure that we are actually inside of a server, because obviously we can't ban or mute someone outside of a server. We then want to gain access to the user ID with args.shift. This will remove the first element from the args array and return it into the user ID. It's important that we're using a let here because I do plan on changing this later on. And also at this stage, the user ID has now been removed and we now just have duration and reason within our arguments array. We're now going to access the next element in the array with duration. And keep in mind that these exclamation points at the end are only necessary if you're going to be using TypeScript. You do not need to include them if you're using JavaScript. And here I'm using const because I do not plan on changing this variable. And then finally, because user ID and duration have been removed, so these two here, we only have the reason left and each individual word will be in its own element of that array. So we want to join all of them together with a space in between to make them one single string. And then here, we're gonna create a user object and we're using let here because I do plan on changing this. And if you're using JavaScript, you do not need to include the colon user or undefined right here. This is only useful if you're using TypeScript. We now want to get access to the tagged user depending on if it's a legacy command or a slash command. Within a legacy command, we're going to access the mentioned users and access the first one. And within a slash command, we're going to get the user option. And it's important that this user string right here exactly matches the user string we have right up here. So if you name this target or member or something like that, you'd want to name the same thing right down here. And also the as user right here is only required if you're using TypeScript and not JavaScript. So what happens if the user does not exist? This will happen if the command sender used an ID or if they tag someone that has left the server. Well, you we first want to remove any less than signs, at symbols, exclamation points, or greater than signs from the string using some regex replace. This will make it so if they did tag a user who left the server, that we still have the proper user ID. So no matter how we're getting the information from tagging or the ID, we always have the correct information. From here, we can fetch the user through our client from the ID. We can also see if that user does exist. For example, if I enter test as an ID, that obviously won't work. And so that would cause this string to be returned right here. So now outside of that if statement, so outside of all of this, we are now going to set the new user ID equal to user.id. And that would mean no matter how we got the user from these three methods, we are going to have the correct user ID. Next, we're going to create a time and type variable using let. We're now going to take the duration, such as 10D or 5M for 10 days and five minutes. And we're going to split the numbers from the non-numbers and then calculate everything as we need. So some exceptions can be thrown here. And if so, we're going to tell them that they use an invalid time format and to use a correct format, for example, 10D, where D equals days, H equals hours, and M equals minutes. The first thing we need to do is split all the numbers from non-numbers from our duration string. We then want to take the first element of the split and pass that inside of parse int to make it an integer and store that inside of time, and then also store the lowercase of the second element and put it inside of type. Keep in mind that these exclamation points right after split here are only required if we're using TypeScript. Now we'll assume that the default time will be minutes, but if the user specified H for hours or D for days, then we want to multiply time to make sure that that works. So here we're multiplying time by hours and multiplying the time by days, 
or H and D. And then M will be the default, so we don't need to multiply anything. So if they are not using M, we then want to tell them to use the correct format and to use M, H, or D for minutes, hours, or days, respectively. Next, we're wanting to calculate our own date and then set the minutes equal to the current minutes plus the calculated minutes that the user specified. This will tell us when this punishment should expire. And we now want to see if this user has already been muted. So we're going to access the punishment schema. We'll pass in the guild ID so we don't get information from other guilds who are using your bot. We'll then pass in the user ID, obviously, and then also pass in type as mute. Keep in mind that this must be spelled exactly like this or however you spelt it right here on your enum. So within this, we now get a result, which will be null if it doesn't exist and will contain an object if it does exist. With that said, we can say if result, then we'll tell them that the user is already muted. Next, we're gonna try and actually mute this user and we're gonna wrap it inside of a try catch in case there are permission problems where we can't actually mute them. And if so, we're just going to return saying cannot mute that user. So the first step is to gain access to the member if it does exist within the guild. And if it does exist, then we want to access a role called muted. And this will be the role that we give to that user. So it's up to the server owners to create and configure this role however they want. Now, if that role doesn't exist, but the member does exist, we then want to let the user know that, that the server does not have a muted role. But if it does exist, we then want to give that user that role. And then here, we want to store it into the database, passing in all the necessary information. For example, the user ID, the guild ID, the staff ID, the reason, when it expires, and of course, the type is mute. And then the last thing for this command is to tell them that we've actually muted that user for the current duration. Like I mentioned earlier, the mute command is very similar to the ban command. So I'm going to actually copy all of this code with control A, control C, or command A, command C on a Mac. And then I can paste it inside of my ban.ts file and then we'll make some modifications there. So I'm gonna open these up side by side. And obviously you want to go through and change all of the mute keywords to ban. So here we'll say it has been banned for this, cannot ban that user and other things like that. Now, one of the main differences here is when we're trying to fetch the actual member and also give them the role. Instead, we're just gonna say await guildmembers.ban pass in the user ID and the reason. Now keep in mind that you can pass in a days here, which is between one and seven. And this is not how many days to ban them, but rather how many messages from that user to delete. So if you want to delete the last seven days of messages, which is the max, you can do this here. Now scrolling up, it's obviously very important that we use type of ban right here whenever we're actually checking if they're already banned. And also equally as important that we use type of ban right here whenever we're actually storing this to the database. And those are the only differences everything else should be the same. The last step is to check to see whenever a certain punishment expires and also make sure that people can't just leave the server and rejoin to avoid their mutes. So create a features folder if you don't already have one and create an expired-punishments.ts file within that. Of course, use .js instead if you're using JavaScript. So within here, you need to import your schema just like you did before. And also if you're using TypeScript, you need to import the client type from Discord.js. So now within one of Keith's commands, we're going to export our own object like this. And this object should have a client parameter, which is why we need to import client because we're specifying the type right here. And of course, if you're using JavaScript, you do not need to include the highlighted code. That's only for TypeScript. And specifically to one of Keith's commands, you should be exporting your own object like this. But if you're not using one of Keith's commands, you don't need to do this here. So the first step is to listen to guild member add as an asynchronous callback. And this is why we had to include the guild members intent right here. So if this event is not firing for you, make sure you have this intent. We then want to see if the user who joined is supposed to be muted within this guild. So it's important that we specify type is mute and obviously important that we specify the correct guild ID and user ID. So if the result exists, that means that the user is muted. And so they're trying to avoid their mute by reconnecting to the server. So we want to fetch the muted role. And if the muted role does exist, we then want to give them that role. Next, we're going to create a function that will be asynchronous called check, and this will automatically query the database every so often, and we'll see if any of the punishments have expired so we can unban or unmute certain people. It's important that we immediately call this because within this function, we're going to be using set timeout to run this every so often. In this case, it's going to be every 60 seconds, but you can change this for whatever you want. We're going to have a query object here with expires, and it's important that this is going to be the exact same property that we have right over here for expires. We're going to see if expires is going to be less than the current date. And if so, it's then going to be returned whenever we're actually executing on this query. For example, here, we're using dot find on our schema and passing in our query object and all the results of expired punishments will be stored right here. We then want to loop through every single one of those with a for of loop 
and we want to destructure some properties from that, such as the guild ID, the user ID, and the type of punishment it is. Next, we want to specify the guild from our client. Next, we're going to see if that guild actually exists. And if not, that means that that server is no longer using our bot. So we no longer have access to unmute or unban anyone. Next, we're going to check the punishment type for ban and mute. So if it is a ban, we just want to say guild members unban, pass in the user ID and a reason. In this case, ban expired. And if it's a mute, we first want to fetch the muted role and see if that role actually exists. Now, if the mute role does exist, we then want to fetch the member from the guild. And if that member does exist, we simply want to continue because we'll be deleting everything within this query from the database here in a moment. So that way, when they go to join again, they won't actually be muted. So it shouldn't matter if the member is in the server or not, but if they are, we want to immediately remove the role from them. So we'll do that simply right here. And then finally, we want to delete everything using delete mini and passing in the same exact query that we searched for before. So basically, we're finding all expired punishments. We're going through and looping through them. If they're banning, we're going to unban them. If it's mutes, we're going to unmute them. And then after all the loops, we're then going to delete everything that was expired. And then we'll check again in 60 seconds or however long you set for your timeout. So let's go ahead and try it. I'm going to open up a new terminal and I'm going to run my bot with npm run dev. So going into my Discord server, I have a testing account here with no roles. We're going to try and mute them, but we're going to run into a problem as soon as we immediately run this because we specified require roles as true. So as the server owner, I have to specify who's going to be able to actually run this command. So I can go inside my server settings into roles and here I have a moderator role where I can copy the ID. We also see a muted role right here. So if you don't have one, make sure you create a role called muted. I can now say require role, say mute, and then pass in this. And now I can also say require role ban and pass in the same ID. So now you have to have the moderator role in order to run ban or mute. So I can now run mute and it should show me the correct usage. For example, user duration and reason. So I'm going to mute the testing account for one minute. And the reason will be testing the mute system. So now it says that the testing account has been muted for one minute and they now have the muted role right here. So I'm going to wait a minute and see if this is going to be automatically removed. And we now see that the muted role has been automatically removed. And so this user can now talk. But what happens if I kick them and they rejoin as they're muted? So I'm going to mute them again for a longer duration, but this time I'm going to mute them using their ID. So we can mute this user for five minutes testing. It now says testing account has been muted for five minutes. And of course they have the role, but I'm going to kick them from the server and I'm going to reinvite them. So I've now invited them back to the server and we see that they automatically have the muted role attached again. So now I'm going to try banning them, but this time I'll use a slash command just to show that that works. For slash ban, we'll then tag the user. Duration will be one minute, and the reason will be testing. If I run this, they're now gone. And they say they've been banned for one minute. If I go into my server settings and I go to bans, we now see that they've been banned for testing. Now I'm not going to revoke this ban manually. Instead, I'm going to wait the one minute to see if they're automatically unbanned. So now it's been a minute. I'm going to go into my server settings. And I'm going to go into bans and we see it's no longer there. So that automatically expired. So that means that our temp ban and temp mute commands are working just fine. If you want to learn how to make your own warn system, then go ahead and click on the video right here.